Hello, my name is Nigel Thorne and I'm concerned about the Welsh Government's new RSC Code and Guidance. In the Code and Guidance consultation document it states the law already requires that RSC must be objective, critical and pluralistic as to its content and manner of teaching. The Act does not change that legal position. By pluralistic we mean that where questions of values are concerned it must not seek to indoctrinate to a particular view, but instead should provide a range of views on a given subject. This means that in practice all schools and settings must teach RSC in a neutral, factual way. Where questions of values arise, they must present to learners with different perspectives on a range of views on issues commonly held within society. The Code and Guidance replaces the PSE framework of 2008. Within the PSE framework it states... The Equal Opportunities legislation, which covers age, disability, gender, race, religion and belief, and sexual orientation, further places a duty on learning providers in Wales towards present and prospective learners to eliminate discrimination and harassment, to promote positive attitudes and equal opportunities, and to encourage participation. Within this context, the word gender is used as a synonym for sex. We know this because at that time... There was no specific equality law related to gender, but there was a law related to sex discrimination. This was the Sex Discrimination Act of 1975. Sex is not mentioned in the list of characteristics covered by the Equal Opportunities legislation, hence gender must be a synonym for sex. Within the new Code and Guidance, gender is plainly not a synonym for sex. It is instead defined as how someone identifies this is the only place in the RSC Code and Guidance where the words male and female are mentioned by referring to these terms as gender identities rather than sex categories, equivalent to non-binary. In the glossary within the Future of the Sex and Relationships Education Curriculum in Wales document produced in 2017, this redefinition of the word gender is made even more explicit. It states, while the concept gender can include the different ways societies assign chromosomes or body parts to sex categories, it is not synonymous with sex. This is again reinforced by Brooke Cymru, who provide teacher and youth work training. On the Brooke website, it states, gender and sex are two very separate terms, despite people commonly thinking they mean the same thing. This is reinforced within the Welsh Government's LGBTQ plus action plan, where the sociological definition of gender is dropped entirely, and the definition of gender is simply a term that is used to refer to whether someone's internal sense of themselves as female, male or non-binary. Indeed, in 2018, Kirsty Williams issued a statement that the Welsh Government would ensure that RSE was fully inclusive of all genders, and Jeremy Miles fully supported her statement. So, children and young people will be taught that gender is not a synonym for sex, but refers to how someone identifies. This contradicts the definition of gender in the Oxford English Dictionary. This new definition is derived from queer theory in her 2005 paper, Girls, Boys and Junior Sexualities, exploring children's gender and sexual relations in the primary school. Professor E.J. Reynolds quotes academic Richard Johnson. Queer theory is linked to forms of politics which deliberately seek to break down the fixed boundaries between the hetero, homo, gender and other binaries to multiply sexual categories and ultimately dissolve them. A personal gender is required to dissolve the binary oppositions of male and female. Language has been changed to refer to subjective feelings rather than objective reality. And this is to be taught as fact. Those who disagree with this change to the meanings of words are regarded as being motivated by hate. In August 2022, members of Get the L Out, a lesbian rights group who assert that men cannot be lesbians, were forcibly removed from a pride march in Cardiff.
asserted that the protesters were motivated by hate. In February 2023, in response to a question about the LGBTQ plus action plan from Conservative Senate member Laura Ann Jones, Hannah Blythin asserted that the question was shameful. Of course, Deputy Minister, we all want the best for the LGBTQ plus community and we want to see a fairer Wales. But as I read through this plan today, I read some of it with disbelief and I find a lot of this plan genuinely concerning, pushing gender ideology in nurseries and schools and fairness in sports and incredibly seeing that you still want to push ahead for those powers to emulate the self-ID bill in Scotland, despite the clear risks that it poses to women and children's uh, safety. The U- uh, the U- an expert on violence and women and girls warned that this uh, move in uh, warned on this move in Scotland. Yet here is your plan. Your own minister for social justice stood up in this chamber time and time again, talking about the importance of women-only refuges and spaces. Uh, it, it's so important. Yet today you announced that you want to make it easier for biological males to enter those spaces. What about protecting women and girls? What about those Welsh mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts when creating this plan? Will something bad have to happen before you wake up and realise the massive safeguarding issues that self-ID poses? Here we are today, wasting half an hour on Senate time Can you discussing ask a plan, a question, please? which you don't have many of the powers to change or implement. Wales having its own self-ID plan is a nonsense. It's clear from public opinion, Deputy Minister, that people see the importance of protecting women and children. When will you realise this? Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, it's find, hard to find the right words to respond to Laura and Jones's shameful. contribution. Yeah, shameful, and I don't think I have much to say in response to that because, you know, we've just talked in this chamber earlier today and we've got members of the community who are here watching. Your words have a dangerous impact, Laura Ran Jones. It harms people. The words that you say, the discrimination that comes out of your mouth. And what I would say, I believe you're better than this. I think you're better than this. I think you're better than this. Can I remind members, this is not a debate between two individual members. This is a statement, and the minister, Deputy Minister is answering the question. But I have nothing more to say to Laura Ran Jones, Deputy Sighting Officer. So- in March 2023, during an online discussion about the LGBTQ plus action plan, a lesbian was thrown out of the discussion for asking a question about same-sex attraction. The Welsh Government made political capital from the comments of Victor Madrigal Bolos, the United Nations independent expert on sexual orientation and gender identity. They have made no reference to the comments of Reem Al-Salem, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women and Girls, who, in a press release issued in May 2023, stated, I am deeply concerned at the escalation of intimidation and threats against women and girls for expressing their opinions and beliefs regarding their needs and rights based on their sex and or sexual orientation. Disagreement with the views of women and girls, including politicians, academics and women's rights advocates, should never be used as grounds to justify violence and intimidation. In addition, discrimination based on sex and sexual orientation is prohibited in international and regional instruments. I am concerned about the decreasing space available for women and women's organisations to organise and or express their opinion peacefully in several countries in the global north. 
women coming together to demand the respect for their needs based on their sex and or sexual orientation have been threatened, attacked and vilified. Al Salem further commented, Moreover, it is important that people, including researchers and academics who express their views on gender-affirming interventions, including for children, are not silenced, threatened or intimidated simply for holding and articulating such views. This is particularly important given the implications for vital issues such as safeguarding, participation and consent by children and sex education. Colette Colfer is a writer and a lecturer on world religions. She describes gender identity ideology as a political religion. Um, one of the ways of looking at religions from a religious studies perspective is in terms of key characteristics, like a family that has characteristics. All religions won't have the same characteristics. Not all religions have a god, for example. So I'm just going to go through some of these. Um, there is, first of all, sense of community. There's a sense of community. People are linked through national, international organizations and lobby groups that reinforce bonds and connections and provide shared symbols. The organizations, I would argue, can be compared to churches with community hubs providing information and support, key people as we could call them prophets, priests, gurus, giving outreach sermons uh, via diversity and inclusion training workshops. Um, the main symbol comes in the form of flags that have been imbued with sacredness and operate as a sort of a totem, um, invested with an aura that requires respect. The sociologists, are, even though I'm coming at it from a phenomenological perspective, uh, I'm using some uh, sociological theories here as well. So the sociologist Emile Durkheim believed that the totem symbolizes the totemic principle, which is the un invisible, unseen force worshipped by the religious clan or group, and the totem reinforces devotion. So what is the totem when it comes to gender ideology? I would argue that it is gender identity. It's an invisible, unseen force. Um, it's, um, and it's comparable to the idea of a soul. It requires a faith. Um, it's divorced from matter, gender identity is divorced from matter, it's metaphysical, it's um, not, you cannot experience it with your senses. Uh, there is also what could be compared to a liturgical calendar, dates mark remembrance events, sacred times set apart from the profane. The idea of the sacred and the profane, again, is Durkheim and it's, it's other um, anthrop anthropologists of religion. So sacred is set apart, it's special. Profane is normal, everyday, mundane. Um, so the, the liturgical calendar would have, obviously, Pride Month, Transgender Day Awareness Week, Transgender Day of Remembrance, um, and Trans Day of Visibility. Um, speaking about biological sex or questioning gender identities during these times in particular is considered taboo. Durkheim wrote about the importance of re uh, religious ceremonial occasions when the person loses themselves in the clan. This can be seen in the pride parade, in particular when individuals merge as one into the clan, reinforcing group identity. Um, those with gender identities announce pronouns, have pronouns in email signatures. Somebody referred to it yesterday as um, a pronoun ritual. Um, and I, I've read somebody referring to it um, as prayer. For Durkheim, um, I've mentioned about the sacred, um, but I would say that gender identities, including non-binary, gender queer, transgender, and gender fuck, I just wanted to say that, <laughs> um, would be considered like sacred and uh, sacred, whereas cis heteronormativity, profane, boring, mundane, every day. And really the bottom line is to completely smash heteronormativity. That's what we want to do. So our kids can grow up and be who they are. We totally encourage intersectional ways of teaching, lots of pedagogies around usualising, so making LGBT plus an everyday occurrence within the school. In our school, every lesson is somehow linked to diversity. What are the different gender identities? That's a really, really exciting question to ask. Do you know there are so many gender identities? So we know we've got male and female. But there are over 100, if not more, gender identities now. So we know that some people might feel like they're two different genders. So people might think they're bi-gender. And then you've got some people who might call themselves genderqueer, who are just like, I don't really want to be anything in particular. I'm just going to be me. Um, coming out as trans, transitioning is the idea of being born again. Uh, so, you know, in the Eastern religions, reincarnation. Um, 
um, and new, new body, new name also can be linked to conversion. Instead, like there's the transubstantiation, not of, uh, not of bread and wine into body and blood, but of human sex changing from male to female or uh, female to male. Doctors are the medicine men. Their savior is pre prescribing hormones. Their mantra, mantras, ritual incantations, chants, uh, dogma. There's a moral system. It says, you know, who's good to hang around with, who's bad, what's the good thing to say, to not say. Um, those who engage in immoral deeds, such as misgendering, heretics, blasphemers. The sins of non-compliance can result in the harem being invoked. The harem is a Jewish idea. And um, that great philosopher, I can't think of his name now, Amsterdam. Spinoza, yes, the harem was invoked. He was cast out from the community. The harem is invoked. And when the harem is invoked, it is the scapegoat. You're creating the scapegoat, the scapegoat carries the sins of the community out from the community. So, um, and I'm going to finish with my, not just this section, I want to have another thing I want to get to, but um, this is the most radical idea I have, so I'm just like testing the water with this. Um, um, James George Fraser is one of the most important um, theorists on myth and, and uh, religion, and he wrote a book called The Golden Bough. It took him 25 years. It's written in a series, various of, um, volumes. But he said, uh, he recorded that some clans eat their sacred totem as a way of ingesting the sacred principle or the divine. Do you know where I'm going with this? Will I just leave it there? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the totemic principle in gender ideology is gender identity, and it's taken into the body in form of... Um, hormones. It is a form of technology as well. So now I just want to mention uh, the political religion aspect of it. Um, if I just read out one or two quotes from Gregor, um, he points out that while traditional religions saw political powers coming from a divine source and truth as revealed by a transcendent God, political religions recognized other sacralized bases of power. The state, a class, a race, or history are examples. Um, now he's talking, he wasn't talking about gender identity. I drew this analogy. He said that Marxist, National Socialist, fascist, followers of Pol Pot and Maoist all behaved as though in possession of a divinely revealed truth and as though communicants of a faith. In gender ideology, gender identity is the sacralized base of power and is treated as though it is a divinely revealed truth. Political religions, according to Gregor, rarely, if ever, concede difficulties in establishing the truth of their most fundamental claims. They treat anybody who doesn't go with it as, you know, having, um, yeah, it's, it's a moral infraction if you don't um, do it. He said, adherents, I mean, the, the, the similarities, when I was reading this, it's like, <gasps> it's not good that I saw this. I, I don't think it's, you know, it's not a good thing. I don't think that it's a political religion. Um, he said, adherents of political religions exhibit, exhibited features of religious intolerance, tended to recommend, advocate, prescribe, and command behaviors. I want to get on to terrorism, so I'm going to skip the next bit. But remember that politics is about allocation of rights, resources, and it's about changing laws. The RSC code and guidance are flawed. The code contravenes the pluralistic requirement. It is not objective, critical, and pluralistic because it does not accept the definition of the word gender that the Welsh Assembly itself held in 2008. The Welsh Government have changed the definition of the word gender between the 2008 Personal and Social Education Framework and the RSE Guidance. And this change of definition puts schools at risk of contravening their legal responsibility to ensure that they provide RSC teaching that is objective, critical and pluralistic. In the RSC Code, there are very many cases where teachers need to teach children about both sex and gender. For example, in Phase 2, between ages 7 and 11, pupils are to be taught that valuing and recognising the contributions of everyone and the importance of sex and gender equality. There is no provision within the Code and Guidance for teaching children that very many people believe that people do not have a gender in addition to a sex, and that in all but the last few years this was the accepted view. Still, the Welsh Government are ploughing on. The Court of Appeal refused an appeal to the judgment of a case brought by concerned parents and made in the High Court last year. Jeremy Miles stated, With regards to how the Code and Guidance approached issues relating to different sexualities, gender identification and the respectful treatment of LGBTQ plus people, the Right Honorary 
Lord Justice Mail said, it is inconceivable that such teaching could be contrary to the common law or the Human Rights Act. On the contrary, diversity and inclusion, including as to the LGBTQ plus community, are fundamental values of British, including Welsh society. This is an important vindication of the approach taken by the Welsh Government to RSE. That approach is intended to keep children safe and to promote healthy, respectful relationships. Schools are legally required to ensure that learning is developmentally appropriate, to provide information on RSE which includes a range of views on the subject and does not seek to promote one view over another, except... Of course, in the RSC Code and Guidance, one view is being promoted over another. If schools teach as fact the belief that gender is how we feel about ourselves rather than being a synonym for sex, then this will be a contravention of the objective, critical and pluralistic requirement. The impact is already being seen in other countries. You're entitled to your opinion. If I am, then why would you kick me out of class? It's not very inclusive of Can the I finish my sentence, please? It's not very inclusive. No, I'm sorry, what you were saying was not very inclusive. And this is an inclusive school. Yeah, what, how is what I was saying? Because I was saying that what's wrong with the website is that there are more than one gender in well, this country. That's Bible. your opinion. That is my opinion, and that is an opinion which is acceptable in the school. I'm afraid yours, which you're saying that there's no such thing as anyone other than male or female, is not inclusive. Scientifically, there are just two genders. Depending on what I get, I get agenda that. But you, you, you are choosing to make an issue of this because I said, "Are you really going to do it?" That was your opportunity to, 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 to keep quiet. You made the issue with it on the website. You said, "Oh, this website doesn't have more than two Murray, You were clearly given an opportunity not to pursue it. You chose to do so. Yeah, because I think it's. You silly. chose to do so. Yes, that's the key question. You chose to do so. I think it's silly to have anything other than two genders. So. That okay? Could anything you please, else? Is could a you please thing? keep that opinion? To your own house, thank you. Not in the So school. you get to put your opinion out in class, and my no, opinion. No, I, I am not. My putting opinion my, has to stay I am inside not my house. putting my opinion. I am not putting my opinion out. I am stating what is national school authority policy. Okay. Well, it's not scientific whatsoever. Not every policy is scientific, Brian. Uh, sorry, not every science. Not every policy is scientific, Murray. And you can't come out here and say that I'm not being inclusive when someone says I didn't you disagree say with. You, so you I said what you were saying you, was not being inclusive. You kicked me out of class. If you, if, if you want to have a discussion about it, we could have done it, had a discussion. You don't have to kick me out of class. I'm and sorry. waste that, 30 minutes I'm, of my time. Or I could have been down revising, doing something else. Instead, I state something I believe in. You kick me out of class for 30 minutes and okay. I'm waiting on the Take this somewhere else, Murray. You can make an official complaint. I'm Please not going to make an official complaint. Why not? I just think it's... it's I know what you think and I know what... The authority thinks. I know what the authority's point of view well, is very things. clear, very clear that we make no discrimination on the grounds of various... I wasn't making discrimination. I'm simply saying there are two genders, male and female. Yeah. Anything I'm, else is a personal identification. I'm sorry, but you chose to make an issue of making a point which is contrary to policy. You right? made the issue when you complained about the website, sir. Yes, and I made it in a way... And I responded and to I by made, saying, but there are only two genders. I never I made the issue. that... I am not going here. You can choose, but you're making bad choices. I'm making bad choices, okay. I well, think... can I take my bag and go to the research area and start revising oh, it? You can stay here. Okay, I'll stay here. Thanks for wasting my time. Murray, I am not allowed to tell you how much of my time you have wasted. Okay. If you have a vagina, you're a girl, you have a penis or boy. Yeah. yeah. But cisgender is not necessarily the way to be. Is you are talking about the fact that cisgender is the, the norm. That you identify with the gender that of the sexual organ that you're born with yeah. or you're with. That's yeah. basically what you're saying. Yeah. Which is really despicable. How? When it's If I called true. my mum right now, my mum would be sad. Feel my sad. If I called my mum, she'd say. Well, that's very sad as well, then. How is it? Loads of people agree with that. There's only a small majority of people who actually think that. And why do you think we have so many problems in the world with homophobia? Yeah, but it's, because that's not homophobia, that's not homophobia. Yes. I'm it fine is. with lesbians and gay people. Same. I've got nothing against them. Yeah, same. But gender is, <laughs> there is a link between it. And you're How? saying that people can't but change who no, they, they want to be. They can't. Unless you, you get a so penis wrong. attached. No, I'm not. You're confused.
using sex and gender. No, I'm not though, because yes, if you have you a are. vagina, you're a girl. If you have a penis, you're a boy. Yeah, you can't be. You can't have a vagina and be a girl. Even then, because you've got those genes. How you identity? Oh, how you identify? Yeah, it's, it's, not. Not. it's not an opinion. With yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And if you don't like it, you need to go to a different school. So I I'm, I'm reporting you to Miss Willis. You need to have a proper educational conversation about edu about equality, diversity, and inclusion. Oh, I because I'm not that. having that expressed in my lesson. When I'm teaching you about you can be who you want to be, how you identify is up to so you. So you think they just don't say it because then all yeah. this happens. Maybe because they're polite and maybe they're sensitive. I've never, I haven't said anything in all of the lessons I've been in. It's just because they turn around and start saying something. So I say, how can you identify as a cat when you're a girl? Oh, well, yeah. they're now writing a statement. I would imagine oh. that you'll be asked to write a statement as well. We will. Yeah, we will. In a Children, Young People and Education Committee meeting in October 2020, Kelly Harris from Brook Cymru stated... We want our young people to be critical thinkers, but ultimately we need to ensure that the conversations are safe. And it's not just a case of anything goes, because all voices aren't equal. We have the Equality Act for that. The Equality Act does not seek to curtail free speech. Again, it will be a contravention of the objective, critical and pluralistic requirement if schools prevent the expression of the traditional understanding that gender is a synonym for sex and therefore there are only two genders. Those parents who would prefer that their children were able to speak the truth in school may wish to support Public Child Protection Wales. Links are included below.